Can you hear me? Yes? So okay. uh, take it away, my friend. OK, perfect. Um, hello, everybody. So today I will show you, I will, I will talk about automation. So um, in a good workflow, well, you need to automate things to be able to process jobs easier, to process more jobs a day, and so on. So for that, um, I'll talk about Enfocus Smart Automation. Do you know Enfocus? Yes, you do? OK, perfect. You know Pitstop, the software Pitstop, to edit uh, PDF, check PDF, pre-flighting? OK, perfect. Do you know Switch? Yes? Perfect, very nice. OK, have you seen it before? Yes, OK, so I'm finished, then it's OK. OK, I will show you a bit. OK, but that's, that's nice. Um, so I, I always compare switch with Lego bricks. And with the Lego bricks, you can build everything, anything you want. Okay? You can build a, a car, you can build a plane, a boat, and so on. Well, that's the idea. In switch, so that's the interface. So we have all the bricks here at the right side, okay? all the flow elements. And we will use those flow elements to build our workflows. And we will build several workflows, and all these workflows can just work in parallel. Okay. So what can we do with that? Well, it depends of, of, of what you want. We can do a lot of things. We can we can have files coming in. Okay. How does the, the files come in? In a folder, they can come via email, FTP, uh, other ways. Okay. Um, submit point. I will show you. And then when those files come in, we have to process them. We have to to make a workflow. OK, uh, well, to, to draw a workflow, I just drag and drop my elements and so on. And then for every element, I have here properties. OK, I will not draw flow completely. I will explain you several examples. So this one, so you, know, you all know Photoshop. Uh, what we will do, well, we will automate Photoshop. You can use Photoshop if you want to apply of, um, an action, a Photoshop action, to a lot of pictures, you can do that in Photoshop in a batch, right? You can create a batch in Photoshop to process them, but you have to start the batch manually, okay? Now, if all of you, you have 100 files and you want to just put them on the server in a hot folder and that they are processed automatically, we can do this here. So in this flow, I just have a, an incoming folder and then the files will be processed to Photoshop. So you see here, I have a lot of tools, and I have configurators for a lot of applications. All the Adobe applications, the Focus application, and other applications as well. OK, so I will pass the image to Photoshop. And I will here, in the properties, I will just say, OK, well, the command is I can, I can write a script, a JavaScript, or I can just use a Photoshop action. OK? So I will create my action or use an existing action. In this case, just the, the sample sepia. OK, and then I will, so switch will just open every image, tell, tell Photoshop to open every image, apply the action, save the image, and then we go further in the flow, just as easy as that. OK, to save the image, I will just, I will um, choose the format I want and so on. OK, that's the first flow. Um, Switch is, uh, yeah, I can, I can have this, this part. This part is just one incoming folder and one outcoming folder. But what I added here, I added a hot folder. And here I will check for hierarchy. Okay, I have folders, subfolders, 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 and so on. So I want to check in this hierarchy. I want to take the files. And I want at the end of the flow here to recreate these folders, actually. Okay, so it's with this tool. I'll use another example to explain this hierarchy system. Okay, I have here. Okay. Right. You see, I have here pictures. Okay, these pictures come from uh, a newspaper site, and they come from a press agency, and every picture has metadata. Okay, in the metadata you have. Description, name of the photograph, um, country, city, and so on. So this is interesting information. And I will use this information, the information stored in the file, to 
sort my files, okay, to sort them out. So this is the final result I want. I want subfolders by country, by cities. So I will throw these away. I will copy these files and I will put them in the in folder. I will then hold this and I will start my flow. Okay? So the flow is active and you see here, okay, it, it's, it sees 25, 21 files. The files go to the next step and normally it should go there but I, I stopped it. I stopped it to, to explain you. So here I have a tool called set hierarchy path. So I will define a hierarchy. And how, you, when you see here in the properties, I can, I can add elements, I can replace and so on. In this case, there was no hierarchy, so I will replace it. And I can define five levels. And the first level will be based on, you see in, in the files you have, as I said, all the metadata, the IPTC metadata, which interests me here, but also uh, if you have a PDF, you can check for every box, the amount of pages, the creator of the file, the creator application, and so on. Okay, so in this case, I, I choose for IPTC, country, um, and then, okay, it checks in the file. So in this case, it's Belgium. Uh, if I take another file, it is, well, I have a lot of files in Belgium. There are some in uh, Germany. Okay, perfect. Okay, so I will add this variable. And on a second level, I will use the city. Okay, perfect. So you see my out folder is completely empty. I will release this. I will activate the flow again. Okay, and that's it, you see. And now it created automatically all the subfolders and it placed the file in the right subfolders, okay? This is just an example. Uh, not everybody has to sort images based on, on country and city, but gives you an example of hierarchy and um, metadata and so on. Um, we can sort the files. I will show you further. Uh, I, will, no, I will explain it now. I will show a nice um, production example. Okay, this one. So, um, we, we use switch at a lot of our customers. It can be design agency, it can be ad agency, it can be printers, and so on, but it, it goes further. Um, in this case, it's, a, it's in a, an ad agency. So, <coughs> so the, the graphical guys create layouts, okay? I installed this a long time ago, so it was still, there was still Express and InDesign, okay? Out of Express, they create a PostScript file. Out of InDesign, they directly export a PDF file. The idea is to uh, apply um, color management to the file and to check the file if it's okay with bits up and so on. So the graphical guys create the piece postscript or uh, PDF and they put it on the server in a certain folder. In this folder, they have subfolders. The first level is the name of the graphical guy. Okay, so for instance, my name is Laurent, de, so my, my email address is laurent.deville at company name, lab9.be. So I just took name dot, uh, first name dot last name, okay, before they add. So when I have this information, is the first level of the hierarchy, I can just add, add company and then I have the email address of everybody. Just a trick, there are other ones. Okay, so I, I do this. The little script here will attach the email address. Uh, now you don't have, uh, with the new versions, uh, in the meanwhile you don't have to use a script for that. Um, okay, and I will sort the files. So you see arrows, you see connections. If I make two connections for after a folder, the files will be duplicated unless, unless I sort the files. So here, I filter the files. I have here uh, options, so I can include these jobs, and it can be based on file types, okay? So the postscript goes there, the PDF goes there, and so on. It can be based on uh, file patterns, so something in the name, okay? A star dot PDF, all the PDF beginning with A, it can be based on regular expression. Who knows regular expression? No, not yet? Okay, you have to check that. Oh, okay, one, okay. So it's very interesting. You can, you can have file name patterns, okay? A job name consists of six digits and so on. Um, conditional variables I showed you. Okay, so I will sort the files. The postscript go here, goes here, and then 
I will use distiller. I just keep a distiller. Uh, I select a distiller setting, and uh, it will convert the file. What happens? Normally, I get a PDF out of it. Okay, in case of success. So you see, connection here are traffic lights. In case of success of war or warning, I want the data file. I want the PDF to go there. Uh, eventually, I can get an error when distilling the file. If I have an error, I want to get the log file. So I say log file. And the log file, I will just email it to the graphical guy. And because I have his email address, I will email it right to the, to the right person, OK? Not to everybody. We can create a spam machine, but it's not the idea of it. Um, so we agreed here. The PDF go there. The Perl scripts are converted to PDF and go there. And all the other files are trashed away because normally you don't send other files. OK, then they arrive here. And we want to apply color management. So for that, we use a, so, um, um, a software from GMG, the GMG color server, that will apply ICC profiles, convert the colors. And um, the, this software is not in the list there. Okay, So I cannot drag the icon and use it. But actually, I can use it. Because all the software ha here, well, it's easier. Of course, when you drag a, an icon from there, you can use the software. And you can configure the software from within switch also using variables. Um, but in this case, it's not in the list. That's not a problem because it's a folder. It's a, an application, sorry, that uh, deals with hot folders, OK? An in folder, out folder. So I just, from switch, place the file in the in folder. The application does its job. In this case, applies uh, and converts colors, OK? Applies ICC profile, converts colors. And then put the file in the out folder. And then I take the file again in switch, and I go further. Actually, I could split this in two flows, or just keep it like this in one flow. OK, so I got the file with uh, correct color now. So I will uh, rename it. So there's a renamer tool. Uh, by renaming, I mean here we will just add a suffix uh, that says underscore C280. Uh, That's the maximum ink level. Uh, the file is renamed. And then I will send it to Pits Observer to check if the file is correct resolution, fonts, and all those things. I will pre-flag the file. So I will send it here. Uh, the pre file profile here, uh, well, I just uh, select from the library. So in all the profiles, I pick up one. But I can also use variables. Okay. So uh, in this case, I don't have a job ticket. But I can also have a job coming in with a job ticket. And in this job ticket, I have information about my file. And with this information, I can decide which profile which pre-fried profile I will use. For instance, it has to be printed in, uh, in black and white, uh, in color, CMYK, or with spot colors. And then I select other uh, pre-fried profiles, depending, dep depending on, on this. OK? Right. Uh, Pits Observer will check the file, will pre fly the file. And uh, well, two solutions. It's, 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 it's OK, following to the profile, or not. Uh, when it's OK, so the data file goes here, the PDF goes there. Uh, and the report, the log file, goes there. And what I will do, I will send the email, re the, the report, in a mail to, again, the right person who did the job. Uh, you see here in the email, I have sub uh, in the email subject, I have variables as well. Huh? I say name of the flow, success, and then the job name, okay, which is replaced every time with the correct job name. So actually, you. You, if your email software is open, you just get the little pop-up from the email saying, OK, you've got, you received the mail. You just look at the subject, and you know if it's right or not. Uh, in case of error, of course, well, the subject of the name specifies there's an error, and that's the name of the file. Okay? So just by say, looking at the subject, you already know what it is. And of course, you can then open the, in, you have the log file attached. So if there's a problem, you open the log file, you check what the problem is, and then you solve the problem. OK, um, here, so the PDF and the log files are then put together in this folder. And then they will go, they will be put on the server. And again, I will create a hierarchy. So at the beginning, I check for a hierarchy with x levels, let's say five levels. And at the end, I will create the hierarchy again. Right, the customer also asks for a low resolution file to be able to mail to the customer. Low resolution, so uh, I copy the file uh, to PitStop server, and then I use some actions to crop the files uh, to the finished format, to uh, downsample the images, 
remove ICC, and so on. I have a file, I just add a suffix, low resolution, and I put it with the file. So now I have three files. And then they also sometimes want a proof. Sometimes. So we agreed, uh, we said, OK, right, just name your job, something, underscore, uh, EP for, for, for épreuve in French, French-speaking uh, uh, customer. And then when it's that, when, when you have such a file, the file is copied to this folder, and this folder is the hot folder of a rip, and the proof comes out of the printer completely automatically. Okay? And this is used day in, day out. So if you win, let's say, two minutes or three minutes per job, you just multiply that by the amount of job per day, per month, per year, and it's very efficient. Uh, another interesting example. Um, okay, so we give a lot of uh, trainings, and when we finish with a training, we ask the customer to fill in uh, an evaluation form. Okay, was the training right or not? So customer does that. So he can just uh, select uh, the training. It says switch advanced. I did that one one yesterday. I would go do a focus switch. Okay, the date it is uh, seven three. Uh, who is the trainer? Myself. Okay, I will fill in this. Okay. Okay, perfect. That. Okay. Okay, I will evaluate my training. I will give myself a very good, a very good score, of course. If I don't do this, who will do this? I don't know, do you agree with me or not? Thank you. <laughs> okay, um, so this, perfect. Um, right. And I will hit, I will send my information. OK, right. So the information, of course, is saved. So it's, it's a, a form on our website. So it's saved in the database. We can, we can access it. Uh, there's also a mail uh, leaving to uh, the uh, Lab9 Academy responsible. So that gets all the evaluation. But we also, when we do a training, we, have to, uh, we also have to provide a certificate. So my colleague Zeno is there. So Zeno filled in the forms, and these are his certificates. Okay. Uh, so a long time ago, before we did that manually, we opened the InDesign file template, we filled in, or we used data merge in InDesign. You know, data merge in InDesign, not yet. Okay. And then, uh, and then we we made the, the file. Okay. We exported the PDF. Well, here it's completely automated. So we have a, a switch running uh, on the server. So the switch will receive the email. So the, the, the form system will send an email. The switch will receive an email. Okay. Um, in the email, you've got a uh, name, and then the following line is the name of the person and the company and so on. So I just wrote a little. It's not a, a nice CSV file or XML file. Okay. So I wrote a little script that will read five minutes. Okay. That will read the um, the mail, and that will um, find all the variables. Then the variables are uh, passed away to, to InDesign, is in this case. And in InDesign, I will uh, open the template, and I will um, fill in all the variables, and then I will export a PDF. And the PDF file will be uh, saved on our server, saved in the DAM system, so what you see here. Okay? So a DAM, Digital Asset Management, database of files. And then we will also send the um, form to the user. Okay? And uh, again, lots of variable. Okay, so Lama Academy, um, name of the training, the date, and so on. And uh, in the text of the mail, you've got here, that's the ID. Okay, dear, and then the first name. Uh, here is your certificate, name of the training, the date, uh, congratulations. And you've got also the, the, the teacher is also a variable. So we've got the right teacher and so on. So if the customer fills it correctly, it works perfectly. 
Okay, I don't have much time. Uh, if after what you want to see more, just come on our booth, Lab9. I will show you more if you want to. Uh, I'll give you uh, this example. Okay, so um, is this um, for the Belgian Post? Okay, Belgian Post. You can you can order your stamp. You can personalize your stamp. You just go on the website. You upload a picture of you or friends or events, and then you can order stamps. Okay. Um, so this this is what they get. That, that's the software does this sheet. Okay, but it's not it's not completely uh, finished. So what they have to do is uh, yeah, for instance, this one. Um, it's an A4 sheet, and they want to print it with two sheets. So we have to imp impose them together. There are uh, imposition software for that. Okay, but what we also want to do, right? Look, we will all put them horizontally. So if it's vertically like this one. I'll just rotate it. So you now I use uh, an action from uh, pit stop. So we have action or macros in pit stop. I rotate the file. Then we will add a varnish. You see here the red color. It's a, a varnish. It will be. It's a, um, a custom color. It will be printed on a varnish as a varnish on the printer. We add the name of the file here. Okay. So the name of the file comes here, and then we we have to impose them together. We can use an imposition software, of course, but in this case, for something very simple, what I did is I said, OK, this is the top file, OK? And it's here. And uh, so, and so I, I add extra white room, and, and there is the right space, and there is here the, the, that's the definitive size. And for the other one, for the other one, I will just say top, and then, sorry, 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 I will. Use the bottom action, okay? So space it, add it on the upper side, okay? And what I now need to do is those, I have two PDFs and I will just put them on top of each other, okay? And my imposition is done. So it's a little trick. Of course, it's not a real imposition software, but it works. So I have a, file, a, a job here with two files and I will put it here uh, in my, my job here. I will paste it. Okay, here for the demo, I just copy and paste files. Of course, in production, it's a hot folder. You just drop as many files as you want in the folder, and it works. Okay, so it will go all the way. What I explained, it will check landscape portrait. It will uh, duplicate the file, or if I have two files here, it will join them together, and so on. And I will cheat a bit. I will show you the final result, and this is the final result completely automatically. He will kick me off stage, so it, it's okay. Um, I, I will finish here. If you, if you want to see more, come and see us on the booth. Do you have questions? No questions. I hope maybe it's because it was super clear. I hope so, or maybe totally not. But then, then we have a problem. Okay. Thank you, Laurent. Thank you, Laurent. 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 That You're is welcome. like the yeah. That's great. Get a, an applause. Thank you. Yeah.